welcome to Bytes of Code. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to pause and resume music in Spotify. In our last video, we saw how to actually open Spotify. We can use Pa'aro GUI to kind of type and search Spotify, then open it. After it's open, we press the space. Something a little similar we're going to do in our pause and play music Python file. So let's go ahead and start by explaining uh, we're going to start at line 37 and we will get to these two very important functions later when we actually use them in our code to, towards the bottom here. So here in line 37, I actually have a program name. I'm just going to use Spotify.exe and kind of the challenge here is to identify the Spotify.exe window. Uh, Spotify, when it's playing, it has a lot of different applications that are ran. We even have a background task host. So whenever we ask Windows for the Spotify application that's running, it actually gives us all of these. Uh, this is a little bit of a problem because eventually we're going to just press a key to try to interact with Spotify. In this case, if we press pause or if we press space, then it will pause or play the song. But if I'm at the wrong window, like I'm on Visual Studio Code right now, and I press space, it's doing nothing for Spotify. So it's important to actually focus on the correct Spotify window before we send key interactions. So that's going to be the majority of this uh, script is going to be actually identifying the Spotify application. So here again, we have our program name Spotify.exe. We have a list of process IDs, which is going to be used uh, later on that we're going to start filling up this array and sending it to one of our important functions over here. Uh, we're also going to have a timeout because we do have a while loop at line 42. I just don't want this to run forever. I don't want this. I don't know why it would run forever because we have some exception handling here and for else. But I just want to make sure that this is not something that's going to hug up the system and I, c I can't control it. We also have a Boolean here is open. We're going to set it equal to false. This is the Boolean is going to help us to have like a flag so we can identify is Spotify actually open or if it's not. If it is, then we're going to use our press key function, which we'll see later. And if it's not, we're just going to push a log. Spotify is closed, so we know what's going on. In our while loop, this is again an infinite loop, so while true and while time is less than our timeout. And again, our timeout is going to be two minutes. So this is just kind of a quick double check, making sure that we're not running this for more than two minutes in this while loop. Then at line 44, we're going to iterate through all of the processes. So this is going to be using PSUtil. This is a module that we're going to use. Uh, and in here, there's a function called process underscore ITER iteration. And this is going to help us get uh, processes that are running on our operating system. It's going to return this process object. And in here, I have a try catch. Uh, I'm going to catch no such process, access denied, zombie process. This is something that's on Mac. I haven't tested this on Mac, but this will help to catch exceptions on Macs. Uh, if the process, if the program name is in process name, so basically if Spotify.exe is here in my process name, then I know Spotify.exe is open because it's here listed as part of my running processes from this function process underscore iter. I know that Spotify is open somewhere. So we're going to go ahead and just grab all of the process IDs because we'll have, again, we see here, we're going to have three, four, five, six, something like six process IDs. So we're going to just add them all to a list. We have a list right here, an empty array. And we're just going to continue to do that. Eventually, because this is a for else loop, eventually the for loop will finish. Once the for loop finishes running through all of our processes, uh, we'll have the is open variable either true or false. If Spotify was open, we're going to do a console print Spotify is open. We're going to do a quick pause on our script, and then we're going to go through our press key function. If it, Spotify is not open. We're just going to print Spotify is closed and we don't have to do anything. But let's now take a look at this press key function. Press key, uh, we take a list of PIDs or we can say we take an array of integer, we can say two. So the Spotify PIDs, these are all the process IDs. And the process IDs are something like this. 
you can see PID in your Windows operating system. Those are the process IDs. They're kind of tied to a specific application that's being ran. So I want, what I would like to do here, the purpose of this function is to connect the app variable to a process ID. Once we have connected my app variable, we're going to set this application to the top window and make sure that it's focused. We're going to pause the program a little bit with time.sleep, and then we're going to use PyAutoGUI to press space. And this is going to play or pause the song because if you have Spotify open and you just press space, then it will actually play or pause the song. After that, we're going to make sure to get this window object. This is the application, the top window, and we're just going to minimize it. This is kind of a quick way to open the program, press the space bar, and minimize the program. You know, we actually have Spotify open now, so let's go ahead and do a quick example. We're going to run just this script, and we'll see Spotify come up. Uh, we'll see here that it actually had played the song. So as the song is actually playing. I'm going to mute it, but the song is actually playing and it did minimize it also. If we wanted to run the script again, if we press space, it actually would pause the song. So let's run the script. It says Spotify is open. Quick, show the focus of the Spotify window, press the space, and we come back and we see Spotify is actually paused. So this is kind of the way that we're using the keyboard commands in order to interact with Spotify. But the meat of this is going to be right here, the very important function that we haven't talked about. In line 24 of press key, I connect the application uh, by using a process ID. So this is connecting from process equals process ID. So you could put here one, two, three, four, five, whatever your process ID is. But we need to get the correct process ID. Remember, again, we have all of these different Spotify processes. They all have different process IDs. How do we get the correct one? So what we're doing here is calling get Spotify window title, passing it the list of IDs. And this actually returns to us a very specific process ID, one process ID. And that one process ID is actually the window of Spotify. So this function here, get Spotify window title, again, it takes a list of process IDs. Uh, we are going to have an empty array here, titles. This is if you want to get a little more filtering, but we don't need it. Uh, but we use it because this very important function, enum windows, is going to be using it. Uh, line 12, we have a return PID is equal to zero. This is going to be our, our return. This is going to be the process ID of Spotify. Right now, we're just setting it to zero. Here we have actually a function inside of here uh, called enum CB. This is going to be a callback function, and we'll get to that one after we talk about line 19. So line 19 is a Win32 GUI function using the Win32 GUI module. Uh, we have a function here called enum windows. And what this is going to do is this is going to run through all of our open windows, and it's going to call this callback function. So let's take a quick break and talk about callback functions. Here's an example of a callback function that just multiplies to a number by two. Our main function here, line 22, this is kind of where the program would start, so to speak. This is kind of where the program would run. We have our numbers, one, two, three, four, five, and we have a results variable. The results variable calls this main function. So this could be like our enum windows function. That would kind of is our main function. Now, somewhere in this main function, uh, we have passed a callback function. In this case, we pass uh, the function name multiply by two. And you can see it highlighted whenever I highlight this function, it actually highlights the function at line 14. And then we pass whatever values, whatever data that this main function needs. In this case, the main function is asking for numbers. This is for a list of numbers. So that's what we pass here. Our numbers in line 21 are variable. We're passing it into our main function here. We have two properties. We have our, our parameters, a callback function and numbers. At some point here in line nine is an example. At some point, the callback function will be used by the main function and the callback function will make sure to give or the main function will make sure to give the callback function the correct variables. So here the callback function is being used at line nine and passing in one number. 
So that would go right here to line 14. Multiply by 2 takes in one number, and it just returns the number times 2. That's it. And that is what the result would be here. But it's almost the same as saying, hey, use this function, multiply by 2. But in this case, we're using whatever the function that was passed in. Now let's take a look really quick at the result of this. And the result is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, where we passed in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The result now is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And so something similar here is happening. Enum windows, we're giving it a callback function of enum underscore CB for callback. And this function takes in a handler window and results. In this case, we're not using the results, but with that window handler, we're able to check if this specific window is visible. If it is, then get the process ID. This is used using another different module called Win32 process. It has a function get window thread process ID, takes in the window handler function or object, and we're just going to go after the first item in the list here. This is specifically index number one on the array is going to return to us a process ID. Now in this if condition, we're going to check, hey, if the process IDs are none, then we're going to just return what we got. This is just for whatever reason, kind of a fail safe, but this is actually going to really help us. If this process ID is in our list of process IDs, then we know that we have a Spotify window that is visible. And that combination gets us exactly the correct Spotify.exe that we're looking for. Once we have that, we assign it to our return PID, and that is what we send back. Uh, line 17 and 18 are kind of tricky a little bit because usually uh, this return PID would not exist within this function. It actually is out of scope. And if we remove this, uh, line 17, we see the return PID is kind of like grayed out. Like it's kind of not declared is what it says. And it actually says it's not accessed. But when we usually when we hover over variables, we can see that they're highlighted wherever they're used. Like we can see line 12 and line 20 are highlighted. If I click on PIDs, I see line 10, line 16. If I click on HWND, I see third line 13, 14, 15. But when I click on this one, nothing highlights. It's because this is not in the scope anymore. This doesn't exist and inside of this callback function. Enum CB doesn't know what this variable is. So in order to help it, we declare this return PID as non-local. That kind of tells Enum CB that, hey, there, this variable exists and I'm giving you access to it by making it a global variable. Now, even though that this function has no declaration of return PID, it never existed before, we kind of just say, hey, this is a global variable that does exist and we would like to use it. And that's now what's happening. Whenever we click on the variable now, we can see it's highlighted at line 12, line 17, line 18, line 20. Once we have access to that variable, we're going to assign the PID. This is the PID again, where the window was visible. We got the process ID and the process ID was in our list of Spotify process IDs. We pretty much know exactly that this is going to be the process of Spotify to exe, the actual physical window. We found it. So now we set it to our application for it to connect. Then we set it to the top window. We make sure it's focused. We press the space bar. And again, let's take a look at what would happen. We're able to pop the window open, set the focus, press the space bar, and then minimize the window. And with that combination, we have the ability to pause and play music using Spotify. Now, just quickly integrating this into our personal assistant, uh, we put an elif here, pause music, or if we say pause song, or if we say resume music, then we're going to do the same thing we just did with uh, start music. We're just going to go ahead and run this new Python file, pause and play music.py. I have the link for all of this code in the description. Uh, it's been updated recently to have this most recent code. It was a little bit more inefficient, so I've gone ahead and updated it here and on the website. 
Again, link is in the description. Uh, if you guys have any problems with running this code, please do not hesitate to leave a comment. Uh, or if you find some ways that maybe this code could be more efficient, I'll give you that challenge because I know it could be more efficient somewhere. Go ahead and leave a comment and let me know where I could have updated this code. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this helps and I hope to see you at the next video.